Hey friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Vanessa and I do travel and fashion reviews. And so if you like to travel, you like to shop and you like to shop when you travel, you are going to love it here. Um, today I'm going to be talking about my luxury wish list for 2022. So if that sounds like a good idea, keep watching the video. Hey, like I said, thank you so much for tuning in. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. I'm really excited to do this video today because I, of course, have a lot of stuff on my luxury wish list. Um, I just have a lot of stuff on all wish lists. Luxury, non-luxury, work. Like, I just have a lot of goals. I have a lot of things that I want a lot of things. That is one thing I'm trying to work on is being someone that just wants less. I want so much for myself and for my life. Like, I need to calm down. Um, but yes, I have a lot of stuff that I want to talk to you guys about and maybe share some things that, you know, you weren't previously, you know, looking at. If you hear some noise in the background, my apologies. They're still doing a lot of construction in my neighborhood. So this is the life that I live. But without much more rambling, I have my iPad, I have my water. Let's get started with the things that I want. And it's a lot. So let's start with clothes because I don't actually have too many clothes. As you all know, I am on a fashion fast. So I am not buying any clothing items. I'm gonna try to not buy any like clothing or fashion related items for the first six months of the year, except for when I am traveling. Um, when, I'm on, when I'm either in the place that I am traveling to, or if like I just need something specific for that vacation or work trip or whatever, I will allow myself to do that. I also, I think, will allow myself to thrift because um, it's relatively inexpensive. And if I can't find it in a thrift store, then I don't need it. But, um, <laughs> That sounds like such a lofty goal, but I've, it's what, the 17th, 18th of January, and I'm fine. There are a couple of things and I'm like, but I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, so let's get started with clothes. The first thing are, these are all pretty much things that I missed out on last year that I'm kind of upset, um, but it is this Ronnie Kobo coat. Um, I saw it on Reese Wong, and it is like, this is a trend that I've just fallen head over heels for. It is basically brown on one side or tan on one side and cream on the other. And it has this like oversized tailored look. I am really, really, really into that. The coat was a lot of money, but I feel like for a coat um, and something tailored and something for a contemporary designer actually was not that bad. The reason I did not splurge on it last year is I have a lot of coats. I have. I don't need another coat like I didn't need it I just wanted it and I did not want to pay full price for it so of course I tagged it everywhere waiting for it to go on sale um, during Black Friday it actually went on sale 40% off you know that's the deal 40% I didn't end up buying it because I had other things on my list for Black Friday and I had it for longer I had those things on my list for longer one of my biggest regrets last year because Honestly, the stuff that I bought on Black Friday, I still haven't worn because I didn't end up going on the vacation. It's okay. It's really fine. Um, and honestly, like, by the time it's June, I'm not going to need that coat anymore. And so even if I bought it then, hopefully it would be on sale. I wouldn't be able to wear it until the end of the year. But I still do really want it. I actually ended up finding something very similar at a local store uh, in, in my town. It was significantly cheaper, but it also looked like really bad quality, and I didn't buy it. Um, I think I want the original. So if it's still around next season, I for sure will be buying that Ronnie Kobo coat. Like it'll be the first thing that I buy. The next thing, um, you've heard about me rave about these jeans for so long. I'm sure you're so tired of hearing about it, but they're my Margiela jeans. I, when I say I wear them every week, I actually wear them every week. I'm wearing a different pair of jeans today and I am like, what is this? <laughs> what is this? I love the Margiela jeans. They're so comfortable. And I spent a lot of money on them, but I want another pair. I know, I want another pair. I want the, the pair in white. And it hurts so much, you guys, because the white pair is actually cheaper. The white pair is currently on sale for half off right now at Essence. My size is in stock. 
and I cannot buy it because I'm on a fashion fast. And I actually don't have any pairs of white jeans. I got rid of all of mine because I just didn't like the way that they fit. And it's really hurting me that I cannot buy these jeans, but you know, I really want to stick to it. I cannot be breaking my promise to myself 17 days into the new year. So I will not be purchasing those right now, but baby, the second this fast is over, or if I'm like, you know, I see them on vacation, I am, I am snatching them. I am snatching them up. I'm trying to convince myself to not buy them because I, I, I have the loophole of buying stuff for vacation, but honestly, these aren't vacation jeans. These are just everyday jeans, but they fit really well. They really do fit well, really well. I'm not uncomfortable in them and they're long. I'm 5'10", I'm actually 5'11 now. I grew. Um, so yeah, um, I, I just love those jeans. If you're thinking about them, if you are, you know, just kind of on the fence, just buy, buy the damn jeans. They're great. Um, the next thing is a Jacquemus dress. I cannot remember what this dress is called. But it's basically like the, um, the strapless, is it strapless or thin strapped spaghetti strap dress that has the ruching on the side and the back is open. I have seen this dress so many times on Monroe Steel and every color she wears is absolutely stunning. Um, I think I want one for my birthday. Uh, I think it, I have this idea for my birthday and I think it would be a cute dress. Like nothing too serious, kind of casual and just fun. Um, a lot of these dresses were on sale as well during sale season and I just didn't snag them up because I was really trying to save money and I knew that I wouldn't be wearing it anytime soon. And I see these dresses all the time in sales and so hopefully around my birthday, which is in July, um, I'll be able to get another one in a color that I really want. I'm not sure. I saw this pale blue one and it was really cute. But Jacquemus in general makes a lot of just really cute pretty dresses um, for that, that are made of linen and for the summertime and so I think that if it's not that specific dress because I feel like at this point there should be many dupes of that dress if I want the same look and don't want to pay Jacquemus prices um, I will get something similar. I think I just want a Jacquemus dress because they are really pretty. Um, not pretty in the sense of like super girly, but I just feel like they're flattering. They look flattering on the people that wear them. And they're really like up my style. But I feel like I don't know the word for my style, but I would say it's very like smart casual or smart chic or smart sophisticated. Like I always like my looks to look a little bit tailored, um, but I also don't want them to look like they're doing too much, so. Um, and the last thing in terms of clothing is just really anything from the brand Fee Noel. I don't know if it's Fee Noel or Fee Noel, but um, it's a black owned brand. Um, origin the de designer is from Grenada. Grenada was one of the first countries I visited. Um, loved it, absolutely beautiful country. You should go if you haven't been. Um, the prices, the prices are very, the prices are high. The prices are very, very high. Um, but I really just, I, I try to support as many black brands as possible and I haven't really seen a lot of stuff from Fay Noel that I'm like, oh, I need this right now. Um, it's cute, but it's like never pushed me to the point of wanting to buy because of the cost. Um, there are two things that like are a little bit more in my budget. I don't know if they're even still available. I don't know if they'll sell out. I, I think one of them she keeps making, so I'm sure I'll be able to get my hands on it. But the other one are these shorts that are like... I think they're called the panty short um, and I think they just look really cute and I feel like I would wear them a lot on vacation and in the summertime but because of like they're just a different shape and a different cut I really wanted to be able to try them on before actually buying uh, I don't know what the return policy is again a lot of the independent brands like you only get store credit so um, I still really want those pants. I've been thinking about them for, or those shorts. I've been thinking about it for long enough that I think that, you know, when I just start buying stuff again, I will invest in some of those. And the next is just sort of like her puff sleeve bodysuit. I don't know if it's a swimsuit or a bodysuit, but whatever it is, I want it because I feel like I can make it work. Again, um, Finoel is sort of like resort wear and I'm really, really, really into resort wear. Remember what I said, I really like things that look tailored but are also casual. 
Um, I think she does a really great job of that. And so I really want that bodysuit. Like Tanika B wears it all the time. Um, I think even the bodysuit and the shorts together will be a vibe and a half. So yeah, that's something I definitely want. Um, from Fana Well. I just want something from the brand. I want to su definitely support. Um, the next things which I'm really excited about and I know for a fact that I'm going to get because that's just like, that's just how I am. If I say I want it, if I say I want to get it, I'm gonna get it. Are shoes. The first being the Amina Mwadi Begum Sling Box or the Begum Pumps. Um, these are these are very hot. They're on every everyone's feet right now are the Amina Mwadis. Um, and they're quite expensive, but um, I feel like ever since getting my Manolos, I just want to invest more in luxury shoes that are comfortable. Because I've had luxury shoes that are uncomfortable and I never wore them. And so I just can't, I can't justify that. I, you know how I am about dupes and replicas. Like I will buy a dupe depending on the circumstance. If it's clear that it's a dupe and not a replica, I will never buy a replica. Um, I feel like a lot of the luxury shoes, um, I would just recommend getting dupes of them because at least for me, I find in particular that heels aren't comfortable. Um, no matter how comfortable they are, they're not the most comfortable type of shoe. Um, so that is why I want to be really strategic and intentional about the higher price point shoes that I get. That being said, I have heard a lot of reviews saying that the Amina Muwadis are comfortable because of the pyramid heel. And I just think that that's so innovative. I think that, you know, that's really cool how she really, you know, made that pyramid heel thing happen and people are doing it all over the place. And so I, if for nothing else, I want to support because of that, because it's originality, it's bringing something new into an already saturated space of luxury footwear. Um, and the shoe is just pretty. The shoe is just pretty. I don't know what color I want. I think I probably will just end up getting whatever vegan pump or sling back I can find in my size because that's the thing with these shoes is that they are really, really hard to get your hands on. I think my preference would be sort of like the rainbow. I want a yellow one. That's my preference because yellow is my favorite color and I would love to wear it on my birthday. Um, but I will also really like the rainbow kind of watercolor ones that I've been seeing. And then the black ones are also really cute. Um, I just don't wear a lot of black shoes and I don't wear a lot of black bags. Um, so, but I have seen the black one, the black ones worn and they are also really, really stunning. So, Amina Mwadis, me and you girl, I'm gonna see you this year. The next are shoes that I was searching literally every website for at the end of the year last year. And they are the Attico Venus Pumps. I really wanted a pair of these shoes. I thought that they looked really cute and they were really trendy, but they weren't a lot of money. They were, I saw so many on sale, but the problem was I didn't find them in my size. I did not find them in my size. My size was sold out like everywhere. And if it did have, if the site did have my shoe size and it was full price and I just, I'm not, I'm not gonna pay full price for these shoes. I refuse, I refuse. They're too simple. They're cute, but they're too simple for me to pay full price for. And so I'm hoping by the next sale season, which will be around end of May, June, into July, I will find some of these shoes in my size. I really want them in either in pink or in green, like the lime green. Um, I I need to find these shoes in my size. I think they just make a very casual look look elevated. <laughs> um, I've seen them worn with jeans. I've seen them worn with mini skirts. I feel like they just, like I said, they make something that is casual just have a little bit of pizzazz. And that's the vibe that I'm going for. I'm looking for heels that I can wear with jeans. Um, I'm just looking for comfortable heels. I want to wear more heels, but I don't want to be in pain. Um, the next are these shoes that I don't know if I'll ever be able to get my hands on because I don't even know if they're still in circulation. But they are the Chanel Pearl Mules. Um, I don't know where this recent obsession came from. Like, I remember when the shoes first came on, I saw those and I was like, oh, those are cute. But I just... I don't know, I just wasn't thinking about Chanel for shoes. I was more focused on the bags. But because Chanel has been doing all these crazy price increases, I just don't know if bags are realistically 
you know, something that I can be like, yeah, I'm definitely gonna get it back tomorrow. Um, but the shoe though, I think this shoe is so pretty. I think it's really classic. I think it's really like right up my alley. Um, but it's this specific one. It's the one with um, the black pointed toe and then it's like the, you know, Chanel beige color and then the heel with the pearl and the CC on the pearl. I think it's just chef's kiss. It's honestly here. They've made sort of variations. I think this shoe originally came out maybe like three years ago at this point. Um, they made a different one last season which had smaller pearls and it was multiple pearls going down the, the heel of the shoe. But the way the foot came, it, it just wasn't the same. Like it wasn't the same. It was, it was more, the one that came out more recently was very grandma-ish and that's not my vibe at all. So I, I, I might have to reach out to a personal shopper or someone to track these shoes down for me. but. I really do want them. Again, I think they would look great with jeans and they would look great with dresses. And they also have them in just all black. I would like the all black as well, but because I have my Dior um, slingbacks, I feel like that's too similar. So I really would want them in the true Chanel um, black and beige or even a tweed. Like these shoes to me are so pretty. Um, the next are pretty practical. I know they're very trendy, but they're also really practical and they actually would fill a void in my closet that I currently have and they are loafers. Um, Chanel makes loafers, um, Prada makes loafers, and Gucci has always made loafers even before the loafer thing was loafing. <laughs> um, I haven't tried, I need to try them on before I'm like this is the brand that I want. But in general, even if I don't end up going for a luxury brand, I do feel like I need loafers because time and time again I'm finding that in the winter time, I don't have closed toed shoes. Like the only closed toed shoes I really have are boots. And I don't always want to wear a long boot. And then sometimes I will wear a sneaker but I don't have anything in between. It's either boots or sneakers. And I feel like years and years and years ago I used to wear ballerina flats. I heard they're making a comeback. But even with ballerina flats, like you're, there's part of your foot that's still exposed to the wind. And so I would really like a pair of loafers. Um, I Last year I thought I was going to get the Prada chunky loafers but again they didn't have them in my size so I ended up just getting the Manolo Blahniks instead and also I would want to try them on so I tried on some of the men's and none of them were doing what I wanted to do but I feel like the one that I would wear the most and the one I really like is the pointed toe loafer a co-worker of mine had them on and I was like yes I need like I was contemplating it before I was like I don't know what this is gonna look like on an actual person's foot but once I saw them in her I was like yes this this validates that I need these shoes and so I'm gonna try and also track those down in my size and add them to my closet but I do feel like those are really trendy and so um, I'm looking at either the Chanel pair, because Chanel has two pairs. They have the quilted pair that I'm like not so crazy about, and then they have the one that just says Chanel, which is okay, but I feel like that's also a bit much. Like, I don't need everyone to know I'm wearing Chanel shoes. And I feel like they're patent leather. And then, last but not least, it's the Gucci horse bit. I feel like Gucci has had the horse bit around for years and years. It's a classic. I think they have a chunky version of it for, you know, the trendy girls right now, but I think I want just the Prince Down loafers, um, either in black or brown, if I have the money, maybe both. I know the price has gone up over the last couple of years. I feel like I should have bought these when I first started thinking about them because they were so much cheaper um, and the price is probably doubled by now, but I just feel like a good pair of loafers everyone should have. Um, well, maybe not everyone, but most people should have in their closet. It is an essential and it's a shoe that you can wear to work and it's a shoe that you can wear out and about. Um, the last thing, which is like completely unnecessary, I just wanted it last year and it never came back in stock, are the Louis Vuitton Bomb Dia Mules. Um, I'll be okay if I don't get these, but I, stu I still do want them because I feel like they would go really nicely with my Palm Springs backpack or my Alma BB. 
Um, but they're basically Louis Vuitton's interpretation of a Birkenstock. And I have Birkenstocks and I wear them all the time in the summer. They are like my running errands shoe. And so that's why I'm like, if I don't get the Louis Vuitton, I won't like, it won't be the end of the world, but I would still like them. And Louis, Louis Vuitton is not really a store that I shop at a lot. Um, not because I don't like them, but just because they don't make that many things that like, I'm like, oh, I must have this. Which is funny because I'm about to transition into bags and talk about a bag that I do want. Um, if you know me, you know I love a good bag. I love a bad bag. I like all the bags. I'm a bad girl. <laughs> um, but I have decided that I really do want the Pochette Matisse from Louis Vuitton. It is, again, as sort of I'm transitioning back into work. Um, I mean, I've, I've been working, I've been working. And I don't know that I'm going back into the office anytime soon, but I do have work travel. And you know, I just sometimes, like I I have different things that I do, you know? I'm a well-rounded babe. <laughs> um, I feel like a lot of my bags don't really go with like a professional aesthetic. Um, I don't even know what that means. What is a professional aesthetic? I don't know, but I want a bag that I can wear with like blazers and look like really like mature and like a professor. Like I'm always going for professor vibes. Like my whole house is inspired by what I think, you know, a professor's house would look like. Um, but I think that the Pochette Matisse was really popular years back and the pipe has sort of died down, which I think now is the perfect time to get it. I don't believe I'll be buying this from the boutique. I probably will be going pre-loved. Um, what I really want is the um, reverse monogram print because I, I have two Louis Vuitton bags and I don't have one in the reverse monogram and I think that that would complete my collection. Um, if I did end up getting, that is more expensive and that even on the pre-love market, the reverse monogram retails, I think even for higher than um, the boutique price. And you know me, I don't believe in paying more than retail for anything. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that I need three bags from Louis Vuitton. I think that's a bit, especially since they're all kind of similar in like, color and style, honestly. Uh, I think it might be a bit too much, but I will justify having three bags if I can get my hands on the reverse monogram. If I don't get my hands on the reverse monogram and have to go for the regular monogram print, I think that I might sell a bag. And that bag might be my Palm Springs Mini, which would break my heart, but I don't think I can ever get myself to let go of the Alma BB. Even though I don't wear it as much, it still just has way too much sentimental value to me. So in a perfect world, if I had all the money in the world, I would keep, I would have all three bags, but I think that realistically, if I end up getting, um, the monogram print in the Pochette Matisse, I probably would just sell my um, Palm Springs, get a ton of money for that, and then use that to buy the Pochette Matisse. I, I hope that's not a decision I'll end up regretting, but we'll see, we'll see. Maybe money will just fall on me, maybe, hopefully. It could happen, it's happened for other people. Money, fall on me, fall on me, fall on me, okay. Um, the next one is a really, like, no one really talks about this bag. It's the Chloe Test bag. Um, I, I feel like you see it a lot on bloggers, but like no one really talks about it. No one really talks about Chloe bags anymore. But Chloe bags? I have a Chloe bag that I bought maybe like two, three years ago now. And sis has stood the test of time. So, <laughs> um, I wouldn't mind getting another Chloe bag. They're relatively, in comparison to other um, luxury brands they're not like I wouldn't use the word inexpensive but I would say that they are not like unattainable especially on the pre-loved market like you can get these for you know chicken change so okay maybe not chicken change you know what I'm talking about but I do I have seen some colors of the Chloe test bag I have a couple saved on my fashion file list and um this is a bag that I wouldn't like cry tears over about how much money I spent on it. And I could easily also just sell some of the bags in my collection, maybe just one or two. Not even one or, I can probably just sell one and get that bag, honestly. Um, it just depends. But I think I definitely want one. Um, I think, I don't know what color I want. There is a color of bag that I want this year. I just don't know 
which brand I want it from. And I'll touch on that in a second. Um, but I think I'd be good with a Chloe test bag in any color, but there's a pink one that looks fantastic. Um, and maybe a green one, like there's just a couple. So I would have to see what's available on Fashion File at the time, but I definitely do want to get my hands on a Chloe test bag. Cause I just think it's really cute. It's really understated. It's really subtle and like, Everybody and their grandmama isn't going to be in my business about what kind of bag is that. Um, so the next are pairings because I cannot decide. Because I like both bags equally, but I don't know that there's a need to have two of them in my closet at the same time. So the first is the Bottega Padded Cassette or the Loewe Puzzle Bag. Both of these I really feel like I would be buying pre-loved because... I don't think that the retail price makes any sense for either one of these bags. I've heard the leather is great. I believe that, but I'm still not forking over that kind of money for either one of these bags. And the Bottega Padded Cassette has been super trendy, um, but I feel like in the cognac color, which is what I really want, I want a bag in a true cognac tan brown, like that's what I want. Um, I don't care if the hype dies down, I don't care if it becomes chewy or whatever, I would still wear it in that color, in that style. When I saw that style the first time, I was like, oh, this bag would be perfect in a brown. And I stand by that. And then there's the Loewe puzzle bag, which, you know, people say you can find it for cheap on the retail, on the resale market, which is like, you can find it definitely for like half the price on the resale market but i still don't think it's cheap um and they do make them in different like color combos and stuff but i think honestly the brown has it for me the brown the brown does it for me i was in Saks um the other day well not the other day i was in Saks some while a while ago and i saw it in person and i was like this is beautiful like this is truly beautiful so if i don't get it in the true classic brown I still want a significant portion of the bag to be brown. Like they're doing some with like a braided handle and it's brown. Um, but I don't think that I need two of these bags. I think that they do the same thing. Um, and they would add the same vibe to um, a look. I actually probably am leading more towards the, um, the Loewe because it has a top handle and a long strap. Um, and the Bottega cassette doesn't. But... I'm not the kind of girl that just only wears a top handle. Like I, I would much more prefer a shoulder strap. And so between these two, I don't know. I don't know. So you guys let me know which one do you think I should go for. Um, keeping in mind that Bottega is super trendy right now. And the way they was, like this bag has been trending for a while. But Loewe is definitely not on everyone's tongue. Like which one of the bags? Bottega or the Loewe? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, so the next is either, it's from Dior, I cannot decide. Um, I've wanted this bag forever. I just haven't seen it in like, when it first came out, it came out in really crazy prints and, lovely, and I loved them. I loved all the colorful, tribal type prints that they were coming out with they haven't been doing as much of that lately they've been doing more of like the french renaissance type prints and that's the dior book tote i really do want a dior book tote um i'm not lacking for totes in my life um i have my sac de, i have my um saint laurent reef gauche tote that is my travel tote i take it everywhere it's super convenient um but i just don't want a dior book tote i want a dior book tote um, and I decided that if I cannot find it in um, a print that I really love, if they just aren't making nice, fun, you know, brown girl prints anymore, I will go for the burgundy um, monogram or what is it called? Oblique <laughs> print. Um, and the 30 Montaigne bag, which I love. I love. Like, I. Don't even know if it's trendy or popular. I don't know. I, I just love that bag and I personally want that bag. My only thing though is the price. Um, the Dior Book Tote is a much bigger bag and it's cheaper, but at the same time, it's not leather. It's like what? Canvas. Um, and then obviously the 30 Montan is beautiful. It is like just pristine and it's leather and I felt it and I touched it in person. It's a wonderful bag. 
The thing with Dior is Dior will discontinue a bag like that. And not that I necessarily care about a bag being discontinued, but usually that means that the price usually goes down. Um, and so Dior, Dior does not necessarily have the best reselling value. And so I feel as though I do not need to get a 30 Montaigne bag from the store. I also don't really need to get a book tote from the store, but I do want to have at least one in-store shopping bag buying experience with Dior. Call me vain. So I don't know. I, I want both of these bags and probably over my life. Probably over like my life I will get both of these bags. I just don't know which one to get first. So again, let me know. Book tote or 30 Montaigne bag. Um, next on my list is Chanel. Um, Chanel, girl, you breaking my heart. I am so happy I got my Chanel 19 when I did because the girls are playing games. The girls are playing games and I cannot hang. I can't hang. Um, but I think I do want to have, I, I'm actually perfectly fine never buying a Chanel bag from the store ever again. I'm okay with that. But I would like to buy another Chanel bag. And I would like to buy another Chanel bag from the store in a different country and so I'm really I would love to either get a mini or a cocoa handle um, and those these right now are the two bags and the two prices as of today because you know these prices skyrocket every other day um, that I feel like are attainable and realistic for me um, to buy from the store and the thing about the thing about Chanel which I feel like I will continue to buy from the store is because on the resale market they're going for more now so sometimes you're not even getting a great deal getting it pre-loved because it's selling for more money um, which is really upsetting and I have just kind of like you know what Vanessa you might never own a Chanel classic flap and I'm okay with that do you know I'm okay with that because I don't care I love vintage, I really do, but the state of the Chanel classic flaps, even the vintage ones, I just don't want to spend that kind of money on them. And they look beat up. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. So I have this internal dilemma with Chanel. Like, I don't know what to do. I don't know. It's like my biggest problem in life is figuring out if I can and when I can buy a Chanel bag um, but I feel like with the mini flap it's technically a Chanel classic flap just in the mini size um, and then with the cocoa handle it's a really cute bag it's not I don't think it's considered the classic classic range um, I don't know it might actually but um, I think it's around the same price as the mini and it's uh, a little bigger than the mini um, and it's cute I, I like both of these bags I feel like both of these bags are a bag that I would get in a fun color um, I would love to get the I would I wouldn't mind getting the mini in black um, I wouldn't mind getting either one of these bags in black but I would prefer to get them in a fun color a spring color like I just feel like they would add like a, a little bit of like to my outfit especially the Chanel cocoa handle I feel like the cocoa handle really reminds me of the Balenciaga hourglass bag um, and I feel like I wouldn't mind getting it in the same color as my current Balenciaga hourglass bag which means that I would sell my current bag my current Balenciaga bag and get and repurchase it in a different color um, but it would make for a really nice evening bag like, I think it would be cute for that and then the classic flap is just an everyday kind of run around kind of bag and again another pop of color um, so I again because these bags are both expensive but they're both around the same price I don't think that I need to buy two I don't think I need to have two of them you know in one year so let me know again mini flap or cocoa handle all right so the next one is a bit of um it's a bit of a dream. I don't know if it'll happen, but I want to, like I said, the Chanel classic flaps are doing crazy things. And so I, at this, I, at this point in my life, they have priced me out. Um, but I still would like a black bag with gold hardware from a premium luxury brand. And I have come to the conclusion that with the prices 
of Chanel right now, I could actually, if I was able to get like a crazy bonus or like save the money or whatever, I see them as investments. Um, people collect, I see them as collectors items, investments, and also fashion wearable. Like I see them as all of that. So if I was able to get the money for it, I feel like I could actually get an Hermes Kelly. I want, I really do want an Hermes vintage Kelly and box leather and those are going for a normal price that somebody like me can actually afford. <laughs> um, not without saving, not without saving, um, but I feel like I could save enough for it and buy it. Um, also, because this bag is so structured, I have been also looking at the Chanel Trendy bag. Um, which I feel like would fit into my lifestyle seamlessly. This is another bag that I feel like would be very good for work, blazers, just looking put together. And so honestly, if I get the, if I get the Chanel Trendy, I may not even need the Pochette Matisse, but um, I just, I love the Chanel Trendy. And I would also love to just own an Hermes Vintage Kelly. In a perfect world, I would own both, but I feel like, again, they're very similar. Um, and they are around the same price. So, Hermes Vintage Box Kelly or Chanel Trendy. Let me know what you think. Because actually, that would really help me. And there is one more bag that I didn't talk about, but that's because I haven't actually tried it on in store yet. I want to try it on in store to see how I feel about it before I officially put it on my wish list, but I have been looking at it, and it is the Gucci Horse Bit um, camera bag. Um, I want a new camera, ever since I got rid of my snapshot, I want a camera bag for just everyday use. Right now I'm using a coach bag, which I don't mind, but um, I actually want to start using the coach bag on vacation and have one for when I'm home. And so the Gucci horse bit like line, I'm really loving all of it. I love the shoulder bag, but I'm okay not having the shoulder bag for now because I have quite a lot of shoulder bags already. Um, but a camera bag I don't have. So I'm looking at a couple of Gucci, I want to look at a couple of Gucci camera bags. There's like a vin, like I think it's called the Neo Vintage Classic, I don't know. But I want another Gucci bag in the, you know, Gucci monogram print. And so I will, before I officially add that to my wish list, I want to try them on and see how I actually feel um, with those bags against my body. All right, guys, I know this, I know, I need a drink of water. I've been talking about things that I want and we're still not done yet. Um, so the next category, bit of a wild one, but if you know me, you know that I love to do this, it's travel. And there are certain places that I just want to experience in this life. Um, I, as of the recording of this video, I have been to 23 countries. And I'm really trying to get to 30 countries by the time I am 30. So I have like two and a half years left. I can definitely make that happen. Um, I already have, oh Lord, I said I was given, I was going on a fashion fast and I've spent all my money on buying tickets <laughs> to these places. But um, I really, really want in 2022 for the first time in my life to travel to the Southern Hemisphere. That is something that I want to do. I've never in this life ever been south of the equator. And I would like, I would like to try it. I would like to experience it. I'm originally from Nigeria, but I think we're just above the equator. I don't think I've been below. I know that I haven't been south of the equator. Um, and so a couple places on my list are Zanzibar because I've heard such amazing things and I really would love to travel more in the continent of Africa because that is where I'm from. So why am I not traveling there? Um, the next place is Cape Town. Look, I have never been to South Africa, but everything I see about it just looks amazing. I love their music. I love their people. I haven't really tried their food, but I'm sure it's great. And Cape Town looks amazing. 
it looks amazing. Um, I've been watching a lot more like South African movies and I see these houses. I think most of them are shot in Johannesburg, but I'm just like, these houses look amazing. So Cape Town is definitely somewhere I would love to experience. Um, and I think I want to go like this year or next year or just sometime soon. Like I definitely want to go. And then the last one is um, in South America, actually, either Buenos Aires in Argentina or Lima and Machu Picchu in Peru. I don't know if Peru is actually south of the equator. That's something I would have to look into. Um, I think it is. I think it is. Um, but I want to explore more South America. I do want to go to Brazil, but for some reason I want to save Brazil for my honeymoon. And I only say that because that's where they went for their honeymoon in Twilight. <laughs> And ever since I read that book, I was like, oh, this sounds like fun. I want to do that for my honeymoon too. But yeah, Buenos Aires or Peru. Buenos Aires is in Argentina, by the way. Uh, I want to experience one of those this year. And the, from America, they're relatively, you know, inexpensive to get to. Uh, the last category, guys, the last category, bear with me, we're almost there, is cars. Um, I want to get a new car. I've been talking about getting a new car forever and a day. I've just been dragging my feet because I don't know. I just don't like spending money on like necessities. It's so weird because I will spend money on things I don't need. But when it comes to things I actually need in this life, I'm just like, huh. I will say I don't need a new car. I currently drive a Honda Civic. I have been driving her for five years, um, almost six years now. That's the, the first thing I ever got, like the first real big thing I ever purchased with my own money. Wanda the Honda holds a very special place in my heart. I love that girl. She is my ride or die. And um, I have said I've wanted a new car. I think I want, like I like, I'm a big person, but for some reason as a big person, I like smaller things. Like I like small cars. I like small houses. Like I like I don't know like I'm not a big 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 car kind of girl and so um, I feel like I'm at a point in my life where I probably should get um, a mid-size SUV but I'm looking more at the compact SUVs only because here's the thing I wanted when I moved it's the first time I was like oh I see why people get SUVs it's very easy to transport furniture big things from place to place um, so I told myself when I was in my last house that I was going to start looking at, you know, smaller SUVs so that the next time that I moved, I wouldn't have to, you know, run a car and do all this back and forth. Well, I ended up buying a brand new house, which means that I didn't get the car. Um, now that I'm settled in a new house, I do want the car. And I remember I test drove this car for my 26th birthday and I was like, this is the car that I want. I had researched the car for about a year before that point. And then when I drove it, I was like, this is the car that I want. And it is the Mercedes-Benz um, GLB 250. It's a, it's a newer model for Mercedes. And I absolutely, I love that car. Um, it doesn't feel too big. It feels like right up my alley. Um, it feels luxury. It doesn't feel that different than the ride that I'm experiencing. Um, uh, it doesn't feel that different than what I'm used to now. I know I said I drive a Honda Civic, but that Honda Civic, all the tech in that car, I love it. I love it. Wouldn't trade it for the world. And so that is the car that I want. I'm going back and forth between do I want to buy this car or do I want to lease this car. I know a lot of people talk down on leasing. Um, but because it is a luxury car, I feel like number one, I don't want to do luxury maintenance just yet. So I feel like leasing is a good way to get my toe in the water and see if I like it. And then if I like it, then maybe I can commit to buying. Um, and if I don't like it, I can just give it back and get a new car in, in the end of the three years. So those are kind of the things I'm thinking about of do I really want to do this? Um, but I'm pretty sure that I really want that car. That is a car that's been on my mind for like two years at this point. Um, and now is not the best time to buy cars because you know, there's a microchip shortage. Even my Honda Civic is um, selling for as much as I bought it five years ago. And that's not normal. 
usually cars are a depreciating asset or a depreciating yeah they usually go down in price but because of like the pandemic and supply chain issues and, su and such an in demand it's this is not the best time to buy a car that's another reason why i haven't bought one um i've also looked at other cars just to for the sake of saying that i looked at other cars um i thought about a tesla model 3 I don't think I'm there yet. I really don't. Uh, also, a lot of people who own Teslas don't like them. They are always complaining about them. So we'll see. And then I looked at a Porsche, a Porsche Cayenne. Um, I would be getting like a used version of it. And Porsche ain't got no push to start. Did you know that? Porsche cars do not have push to start because of legacy and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, if my little bitty Honda has a push to start, why does your car have an actual key? But that's it guys, that is my 2022 wish list. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if any of these things are a yes or a no for you. If you have any of them, tell me your experience with them. Um, let me know what you wanna get this year. Uh, and yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, bye.